Hi, it's Clint Wheelock from Informa Tech, and I'm here at Techcelerate London. I'm here with my colleague Tom Pringle, who's head of technology research with Ovum. And uh, Tom has had the unique opportunity to be uh, chairing on multiple stages here at the AI Summit this week that is part of Techcelerate. And, and Tom, I'm, although uh, I think you've uh, had the, uh, the, the somewhat unique opportunity to be chairing in the AI Finance Summit, yeah. the uh, Implement stage, as well as the Deliver stage, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Uh, it sounds like you're seeing some common themes uh, among the speakers and some of the interactions that have taken place in different parts of the event, and I'm curious about your impressions so far. No, absolutely. I think it's been a real pleasure to be able to see different perspectives from each of those different stages. And I guess when I, when I uh, kind of first came to the event, I was expecting kind of a different set of themes on each different stage. And what I've actually heard is a lot of uh, common themes have threaded through the presentation. So it doesn't matter whether it was they got a large bank that's been in business since 1856, uh, one of the cool startups that's been talking, or whether it's um, you know, some point in between where we talk about the public sector and some of the bodies that are developing around uh, the topic of artificial intelligence. Um, what's been really interesting about it has been, although technology, of course, is key, um, you know, that we know that artificial intelligence requires data to work and lots of complex algorithms uh, which are kind of crunching that data and bringing those insights and actions uh, that hopefully improve business or outcomes. Um, one of the really key things that's come out has been the people aspects and the culture aspects. So, like, and, and to be fair, I think it's something that you could apply to many different areas of technology as they kind of start their journey into a enterprise adoption, right? So, um, as uh, AI is being experimented with, creating the right conditions for it to flourish in an organization, be it public or private sector, has just been absolutely one of the core themes, uh, again, from just about every speaker that I've heard uh, over the last couple of days. Um, I, the other area that I would think about uh, would be uh, the connections uh, that are so important to making it successful. So when I mentioned technology being very important, people tend to think about people like data engineers and data scientists, and very smart people who are running the numbers, doing the math uh, to make AI happen. Uh, but sometimes they can operate a little bit isolated, somewhat siloed uh, away from the business. And one of the interesting things about data, of course, is when you look at data, it's interesting in its own right. When you start to add that business context into the data and creating those insights, it starts to become really actionable information. And just about every speaker who's talked about their own experiences um, in uh, kind of incubating AI in their organization has really hit on that point which is you, know, you need to connect the business with those technical experts in order to create the best outcomes possible. And I think the final one has been, yeah, it's an emerging technology. So an experimental approach is very important. Now, let's not go completely crazy and say you have to experiment with everything all at once, all at the same time. Big bands very rarely work out particularly well. Um, but what has been interesting is seeing what people have said about being brave, being bold. So going after something and trying and seeing what impact they can make, because they know that their key stakeholders, the executive sponsors who are kind of governing these programs, funding them, are looking to move the needle on the business outcome. So when they've been doing the work up front, they've been looking to find what are those outcomes we're looking to influence and how can we best deploy data technology and the artificial intelligence atop those two things in order to achieve that outcome improvement. Really an interesting set of, uh, of observations, I would say, and I, and I think very consistent with what I've seen as well, which is kind of the overarching theme that AI is no longer a Scott Works project within these organizations. It's no longer uh, a pilot or an experiment. People are really looking at the practical ways in which uh, they need to put mechanisms in place to scale and commercialize uh, on a much broader basis. And what's the, what, what, what are the governance tools that need to be put into place? What implications do these initiatives have on organizational structures, much less technology architectures within these organizations? So very practical implementation considerations really seem to be the, the, the nature of the watchword Absolutely. here at the event this week. And so it, with all that in mind, um, I'm just curious what your conclusions are about what, what does this mean about the state of AI adoption and the state of maturity within, within these enterprises? Because clearly it's a, it's a larger scale than it was a year ago, uh, and uh, it's likely to be even larger scale yep. a, a, a year from now. But, but where do we stand in the life cycle from your perspective? Now, it's really interesting when you kind of think about the development of the technology, and, and to use your words, going from that skunk works world yeah. where we were kind of doing this thing under the covers over here, and it's starting to come out in, into the light, as it were, and yeah. we started to use a regular 
uh, tool in the enterprise technology toolbox. Um, and there's a couple of different areas I'd look at in that. The first is uh, probably as how it's implemented and rolled out to a bigger audience. So out of that data science kind of world and into the, the regular business users every day. Now I have a saying that the best technology is the one you didn't realize that you were using. Hmm. Right, and I see what I see a lot of success in is building AI-powered capability in as features to other solutions. So if my day-to-day -day job is, is defined by a particular go-to app, it could be CRM, uh, so something on the customer side, it might be finance and ERP, but the kind of the use of AI to power features which make my work easier um, is something that's been very successfully uh, trialed and, and I see being adopted in bigger organizations. Simply because it means my job gets a little easier, I didn't have to go elsewhere to figure out the insight, it's just delivered right there to my desktop in my go-to app, and, and there it is. Now, the complexity of the technology and the data behind that might be substantial, but me, at the end user, I don't have to worry too much about that. I'm simply consuming the insights and the capability. So that kind of invisible approach, if you like, uh, in, in terms of expanding it out by building it into people's day-to-day -day, uh, is one of the most successful. And then just briefly to your earlier point about the kind of the frameworks and the governance of it all, there's been sort of twin themes on that that I've seen the last couple of days. Um, and those have been you know, kind of from the ethical stance yes. and huge focus yes. on, you know, are we doing things responsibly? Uh, and I've talked about for some, some years, as you well know, yeah. about kind of the ethical implications, the use of data, particularly personally identifiable information. Um, we know that there's lots of insight and value in that. Uh, we also know that brands, big enterprises, be them again public or private, um, who can be seen as trusted uh, users of that information, that data, do a lot better. So kind of on that grander scale of kind of the ethical approach required, there's been huge focus on delivering really clear, transparent frameworks of ethics and how we're going to use information in an ethical fashion. Kind of the second piece to it, again, and I think it goes back to one of my earlier points about, you know, um, how do you operate this in, in the organization? What kind of governance do we have? And it kind of reminds me a little bit of the days of talking about data governance. Right. And that meeting, and I'm afraid it's a classic, people, process, and technology, yeah. right? right. Um, and I think that's kind of being brought up to an even bigger level. So not just data for kind of satisfying regulatory reporting, but data that's defining how we treat our customers uh, and you know, really things that have an impact on consumers. You know, and therefore, the level of focus that's had at the show as well has been really palpable uh, and something that's kind of generated a great deal of interest amongst, kind of amongst the audience and the attendees. Really interesting insights, and I think overall, I think we can assume that the um, that the focus and, and 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 the maturity of thinking on areas like governance and ethics will only continue to progress uh, between now and some of the AI summit uh, events later in this year in other cities. Yeah. Um, and indeed, as we're uh, as we're watching all of that, I think it'll be really fascinating to uh, take a, a deeper look at the case studies that emerge from some of those larger scale deployments. But. In the meantime, thanks, Tom, for your time, and uh, looking forward to the rest of the show. Great. Thank you, Clint. All right.